sheep know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. Friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. From our war room here in San Antonio, today. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. Hey, family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just magnify the spirit of the Lord on this morning for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Listen, I'm just excited to be in the war room and uh, we just magnify our heavenly father on this morning and certainly to his son, Jesus Christ, and to the precious Holy Ghost of which all of us who are believers are sealed. We just honor the presence of the Lord in the war room on this morning. We are in the war room and it's a little bit after 1030 here, Central Standard Time in Dallas, Texas. Normally we are gathering in Holford Park around this time but we have some tricky weather this morning where the wind was just too high and we want to make sure that everyone can hear the word of the lord we're finding out that the wind uh is a battle uh sometimes when we're out there and so there are going to be times when we have to meet here in the war room but those of you who have been following with us for uh almost the past three years uh you're accustomed to the war room and um many of our messages um we have uh, comp over a hundred uh, messages that are online and virtual. So uh, our church is an amalgamation of both virtual and in real time. And so when we're not able to be in real time. We'll be here in the war room and we do our best to keep everybody. If you tune in, we're, we're live shooting even when we're in Holford Park uh, in North Garland, Texas. So uh, if you come on either way at 1030, you will realize we're either out there or in here and so we just honor the presence of the lord listen we're going to get right into the word of the lord i want to we're going to begin at ezekiel the 33rd chapter so if everybody wants to go there we praise the lord for our heavenly father and certainly to his son jesus christ again to the precious holy ghost the war room has been open in prayer i'm going to open uh, for those of us who are serving here and uh we have our first lady here with us uh in the war room and we just honor the presence of the Lord for her presence. And she's here assisting on the production side as well as uh, in the word of the Lord with us. And so we just ma we magnify the Lord for uh, her presence and we honor her. Um, for all of those of you that will be coming on, I always do my best to keep us on track. We're going to, I'm a, I'm, listen, I'm a word man. We're going to go in the word of the Lord. So we just honor the presence of the Lord. Um, it is Sunday, May 29th, and it is the Lord's day. And we're going in the word of the Lord. So I invite everyone to Ezekiel the 33rd chapter I promise you we're going through about eight scriptures this morning because I'm a word man I believe in looking at your physical Bible and reading the word of the Lord I was sharing that with a friend on yesterday that we need to lay our eyes on the word of the Lord before we uh we're going to open in prayer and then there's something the Lord's laid in my heart to share and then we're going to let the Holy Ghost um, do what he does so immaculately and so profoundly and inimitably and adominably and so um we just pastor aslam we just praise the lord for you uh he's uh greeting us here all the way from pakistan so we just honor and praise the lord for pastor aslam and we bless the Lord for all of you that are with us and will be coming on or all of you that will view this video at any uh, time. Many of you have your own worship services, so we understand you won't be able to be with us. But many of you go back later and you view the teaching and you share in this uh, live experience with us. And so we honor the Lord for you. We are on all the platforms. For those of you that don't know, we're on Instagram, two Facebook pages, ministry and personal. For those of you that are my personal friends. And also, um, and I try to let everyone in so they can hear the word of the Lord and um, and also we're on uh, we have our own website obviously www.bishopgacox.org and we're also on uh, YouTube you just type my name in Bishop Dr. Guy Cox pops right up and so many of you know that many of you do not so I just say it's for those of you who don't and are new to the ministry uh, we take the word of the Lord all over the country we preach all over the world virtual allows us to being virtual allows us to do that 
and so we honor the presence of the Lord um, and um, uh, we thank the Lord for uh, Pastor Felix Lady Joy over in um, uh, at uh, Resurrection Temple International Churches, Sokamau and Kenya, Africa. We just bless the Lord and honor the Lord for them and just many others who have reached out from all over the world and 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 um, and are um, uh, laboring in the co-laboring in the gospel with us. And so um, we're going to pray, dear Heavenly Father. We just bless you on this morning. First of all, for the privilege and honor to stand in your presence, for it is certain that only He that hath clean hands and a pure heart is going to be able to stand in your holy hill and in your presence and receive the the glory of your presence not just as an intellectual thought but receive the reality of that deep in our spirits and in our hearts as your sons and daughters because it is certain that you have given power to them who have believed in you and received you but as many as received you your word says to them gave you power uh to become the sons of god even to those of us who believe and so father we honor your presence in the war room on this morning we thank you for your diligence we thank you for your provision and your heart for us we thank you that as you work out uh, your, as you complete the work that you've begun in us as your believers until the day of Jesus Christ that we are able to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Fathers, we stand in your presence that there is anything that we've said and done that has missed the mark and that has caused sin in our lives. Father, we ask that even on this side of the cross that you would forgive us for we know our master has died for each and every sin. It is not that we're in the guilt of that sin because there is therefore no condemnation. There is therefore uh, now no condemnation to those of us which are in Christ Jesus. We are judged of no man, but we judge all things by spiritual discernment in the power of the Holy Ghost. And so we stand in your presence, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And Father, we ask that you wash us in the blood of the Lamb, that you create in us a clean heart, that we might stand holy and acceptable in your sight. For your word is certain that we are to be holy as you, the Lord our God, are holy. And so we praise you on this morning for the magnanimity of your grace, for the magnanimity of your power and your glory. You are sovereign. It is not that you do whatever you want to do is that you do what you have purposed and will to do for you are not lawless but you are the god of heaven and earth and all power whether it likes it or not is subject unto you all people whether they like it or not are subject to you and father as your children we willingly bow before you we not only surrender in the initial point of our sanctification but in our progressive sanctification we yield to you day by day that you might work your glory in our hearts and in our spirits and it is that inner work that is going to be outworking this morning as your precious Holy Ghost speaks to us, your people, by a demonstration of his presence and his power. We glorify you now. We are in your firepower now, Father. Have your way in me, Lord, as your servant, as I stand humbly before you. It is the only way I would stand, is the only way I can stand, for it is certain, Lord Jesus, you said, without you, we can do nothing. Have your way in this war room. Let your power and your glory go right through these airwaves to stop the work of the enemy and all the lives of those who will not just hear but will repent and receive you lord jesus into their hearts and into their lives that they might come out of this backslidden state out of this unbelieving state out of this apostate reality that they are in to receive you that you might give them your spirit and that they might have the power to become your sons and your daughters have your way in this war room on this morning holy ghost master do what only you can do and we'll be careful to glorify you to honor and magnify you and worship you and you alone for lord you said there is no other god beside you and therefore we worship no other god beside thee you have the preeminence in this place father we bow before you now humbly in the power of your spirit as your spirit invades our spirit move by the fire power of your spirit lord speak to us and say what only you can say reveal to us what only you can reveal and we will receive it and we will execute upon it have your way in this place father Lord Jesus, we magnify your name above all names. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place as only you can. In King Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can everyone say amen? Listen, I, I, listen I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I don't know. The word of the Lord says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. And I don't know about you, but I have entered his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and telling you we've been worshiping here in the war room 
and uh, we've had worship going for several hours now. We just magnify the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Listen, the first thing at the outset, I want to begin on this premise. I've asked everyone to go to Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, of which I will proceed in what the Holy Ghost is going to say to us on this morning. But I want to remind all believers on this morning that we are to be that one of the things that occurred in the upper room when the Lord tells his disciples, you go and tarry into Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And what I am seeing that's most peculiar to this apostate church, put a mental pin on that because that is where we're going on this morning in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. We are going um and we're going to talk about uh, uh, the aspects of this apostate church this morning because it is certain the Lord means to bring this church that feels like it's lofty. And I'm not. And when I say church, I'm not talking about the buildings per se. I'm talking about the heart of the people who have slid back from the principles of the Word of God. Might I remind all of us believers on this morning that one of the things that showed up when the Holy Ghost showed up in this upper room in Jerusalem was fire power in Him. Fire showed up, cloven tongues as of fire. Fire showed up. In in this upper room and too uh, far too often in our churches today what we are seeing and myself and the missus we had the uh, privilege and honor to hear bishop demetrius senegal last night preaching many things that i've already preached and i don't say that to be facetious i say because we are watchmen and i'm not the only one i've said that many a times i'm not in the spirit of elijah in that sense where i believe i'm the only one there are many others and we had the blessed fortune to hear the holy ghost through bishop demetrius senegal right here based in houston texas we are in dallas texas and we just um and he's uh, preaching out of Ezekiel the 23rd chapter is a tremendous blueprint preachers if you're not there you need to get a revelation of the Holy Ghost and get it deep down in your spirit that is the blueprint for our generation I preached on it many times uh, Bishop Demetrius Senegal has the revelation he's preaching on there are many others but many more need to come into the revelation of where we are because judgment has come upon our nation and the nations of the world more strenuously upon the United States of America for it is certain and we have prophesied this before and stated this before is wherever the gospel is been propagated the most that's where the lord will hold that country most responsible and there's no place that the gospel has been propagated more than in the united states of america we have called the god of abraham isaac and israel whose son is jesus christ our god in this nation and then for, since 1970 and in many ways uh, we were sliding back even before then, but we had the great evangelists like, like Dr. Billy Graham and many others. I grew up in Detroit where there were great bishops, Ellis Bonner, we could go on and on. Many great worship leaders who have come through there. Detroit is a hub for uh, gospel music and, and, and the gospel world and the preaching of the gospel. Many mighty warriors have lived and died and come through there and gone on to be in the General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn in heaven. And so we just honor the presence of the Lord for such a rich legacy growing up in Detroit and the powerhouse gospel mecca that it was. And so we're in the firepower of the Holy Ghost and fire is what showed up in that upper room and far too often how we are clear that we have the reality of two churches now the body of Christ in this apostate church it is the reality of Matthew 25 the five foolish virgins virgins and the five wise virgins is the fact that there's no firepower in this church May, folks are preaching and speaking sermonizing out of the imagination of their own heart their leaders are many of the believer many of so-called saints who say I'm a Christian I'm a believer many don't even say believers they say i'm christians and the first lady had to correct us on yesterday had to uh, uh the day before yesterday had to correct someone on that reality that we are believers because the term christian has become so abused and so misused now and the reality is we were first called believers we were not called christians they first said that at a place called antioch in jerusalem but believers the the apostles did not say that of themselves others saw them and they wanted to label them we are taking those labels off we are believers in the lord jesus christ he said but as many as received them come on john the first First chapter in the 12th verse but as many as received them to them gave he power uh, to become the sons of God even to what those that are called Christians no to them that believe come on saints somebody and I, listen I'm, I'm praying the Holy Ghost is touching somebody else besides me in this war room on this morning so we need to be mindful body of Christ of the fire power of the Holy Ghost it is what separates us from this apostate church and all other religions all other believers we are in a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost of the fire of the Holy Ghost and in his presence and his presence is known when his fire shows up in us many folks in their carnality want to say oh you're passionate about what you're doing no baby this goes deeper than passion let me preach to somebody this morning because you don't have a revelation of the Holy Ghost this goes deeper than passion this goes deeper than passion let me put this in somebody's spirit on this morning this goes deeper than passion 
because a passion is an emotion that comes from the animistic realm don't let the word throw you it's a theological term to refer to our soul realm uh, w from which our life ta our, our vitality and life force uh, comes from in the Hebrew it is the word nephesh and the Lord God blew into the uh, and into man and he became a living soul this is the Hebrew word nephesh a living soul it is vitality and life force and so passion derives from there because it gives us will it is the term libido which we usually refer to in a sexual connotation, but that's not its only connotation, not even its primary connotation. If you have understanding uh, in, in 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 the things of the spirit and in the things of higher learning, and so uh, libido refers to the will, will drive. I I, re, I remember learning uh, uh, it was Dr. Paul Tillich that talked about will to power. We have this drive that goes to power. You have to have the will in order to do, and then when you have the will in order to do, and this is why the word of the Lord says the Lord accomplishes accomplishes all things according to what he has purposed and according to the desire of his will because this is the will that comes from vitality and life force the animistic realm that drives us into the third part of our psychological state which is our decision making processes the term for this is ratiocination and our psychological state we've taught on this before don't have time to get back in again go online you can get all those videos uh, uh, about a year and a half ago I taught on this you can go back and get all those teachings and get yourself up to speed but I need us to understand, it is not passion that we have in the Lord. It is the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Passion, you need drive. But see, the firepower of the Holy Ghost, whether you have passion or not, whether you're feeling it or not, as we say, whether I woke up this morning and the Lord was on my mind or not on my mind, whether I, I felt like uh, praising him or not praising him, the firepower of the Holy Ghost will bring the Lord into your remembrance, even when we're not thinking about him, when we're in trying and challenging situations. You need, believer, the firepower power of the Holy Ghost. An unbeliever, you need to come and repent and you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so you can receive the firepower of the Holy Ghost because it is certain, it is this firepower that even when I don't feel like preaching and there are some time I don't, even when you get frustrated at those you're preaching at, uh, 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 to and even when you get frustrated with your family and you get frustrated with, with life's measures and all of these things, the Holy Ghost will kick in in his presence and his power and this is why he is the mediator by the Spirit of Christ of the New Covenant because you need the mediating power of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Ghost. He said, if I don't return to the Father, it is unprofitable for you because the Comforter can't come. And it is when the Comforter comes that he mediates every situation. King David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I notice he said, I'm coming through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't get stuck in it like many in this apostate church and many of you unbelievers. And I bless the Lord this morning that we as believers, yeah, we go through things just like everybody else and many things we don't go through like everybody else because there is a purpose that we serve the Lord there is an anointing and a blessing that falls upon us that things that happen to the wicked don't happen to us a lot of times because we are in the firepower of the Holy Ghost and he has promised to protect us he said only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked why King David tells us by revelation because you have made Elohim you have made El Elyon the most high God your habitation therefore therefore shall no evil will befall you nor any plague like this COVID-19 plague and like the one on January 6th and like the one on February 23rd and this coming this 2023 January 1st to March 31st the fourth plague will ensue in the United States of America in the United States of America and the world over mark your calendars it is coming and after 2023 we have six more to go and th th this is not going away anytime soon and I asked the Lord according to the spirit of Isaiah the sixth chapter Lord how long shall I preach in this manner and he said until their house is left desolate and unto them I'm telling you I feel like jumping out this window on this morning I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost we need the firepower of the Holy Ghost I'm telling you right now we need to be in the firepower of the Holy Ghost you need to be indwelt by the spirit of the Lord unbeliever because the Lord is not in close proximity to the wicked. It's not because he doesn't desire to, it's because you don't desire him to be. And so we've taken the Lord out of prayer. And in 1970, as I alluded to earlier, at 1970s, when we can mark that we begin to change laws that brought judgment now upon this nation and warning shots like 9-11, 
had been fired across the bow of our country and we paid no attention. We went into church for a little while and all the churches were packed and within a month or two, everybody was back out of the churches doing what they want to do because we're looking for a band-aid, but we're not looking for the cure. I'm going to go around that block again. We're looking for a band-aid of, of, of our politics, the band-aid of our socialism, the band-aid of our humanism, the band-aid of our materialism, the band-aid of our enlightenment, uh, uh, in our, our uh, enlightenment. We're looking for all of these band-aids, but we're not looking for the cure and the answer, which is the firepower of the Holy Ghost in accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the Lord says in Acts the fourth chapter, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. I want to counsel us to the firepower of the Holy Ghost on this morning. I want to remind all of us believers who have the Holy Ghost, not to be distracted by the cares of this life and, and, and the rudiments of this world and its vain tradition and its teaching. Our fear is not taught to us by the rudiments of men, by the traditions of men. All right, everybody, uh, we're back. Had a little issue with the internet there. You know how that goes. Many of us preaching and many of us watching the preachers. We certainly know about that. Listen, we're diving right in. Let's go to Ezekiel the 33rd chapter. Just want to remind all of us in the body of Christ uh, concerning the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You know, folks are talking about, oh, you guys are so passionate. It's not passionate. It goes beyond that because we will give the word of the Lord. We are led by the Spirit of the Lord each and every day. We are out here talking to people uh, and, 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 and about their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't do that by passion. And I'm not saying that passion isn't a part of this. What I'm saying is we're not led by a pa uh, by a passion. We're not led by emotion. Myself and the First Lady had a lunch date yesterday after um, a meeting that we had. And um, we are talking about the Word all the time. And that is one of the things we're talking about is is what we need to teach the men and women uh, that, that are a part of uh, Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, we, we're, we're going to really get into teaching the men and the women individually about the difference between being led by emotions and being led by the Spirit of the Lord. It is so critical because it is the why we have the reality of two churches because many are being led by their logic, they're being led by their emotions, they're being led by other people's word, but they're not being led by the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of the Lord. And that's the difference. We're not doing this because we're not led by passion. We're not led by uh, intellect. We're not led by ratiocination and our logic. We're not led by all these things. We're led by the Spirit of the Lord. We're not led by uh, led by uh, religious asceticism and all these things. We are led by the firepower of the Holy Ghost indwelling us. And that's why we have the boldness to preach to a nation and to the nations of the world and to the global community. We have the boldness to preach to you exactly what the heart of the Father is in our generation. It is not houses, cars, and land and jumping around for blessings. Uh, we got many pro prophets prostituting their gift and the gift that the Lord has given them want to prophesy smooth things to you. And the people are saying, tell us, uh, don't tell us what's right. Don't tell us what's holy. Don't tell us what the Lord is saying. Come on, Isaiah, the 29th in the 30th chapter they wanted they want prophesied to us deceits they told the prophet isaiah listen to me we're not going to prophesy deceits to you we're not going to prophesy lies to you we're not going to prophesy uh satanic measures to you we are in the firepower of the holy ghost and we're going to prophesy we're going to let the holy ghost speak directly through us to you and so many times bishop uh it seems like you were in the house with me they told me for 30 years i've been preaching now and it seems like you were with me last night. Well, you know that I wasn't. So now you know, if you don't know that the Holy Ghost is staring you down the barrel and you need to answer him. All right. Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. If you'll look at that with me, uh, let's go to the 30th verse. It says, also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Uh, he's saying they are speaking against you. They are speaking against the word that you are prophesying, uh, Ezekiel. They are speaking against you, great prophet. This is the Lord telling his servant this. This is not some other man that the Lord has sent to tell the prophet this. The Lord is telling the prophet this. In his communion time with him, he is saying, my people are speaking against you and they're speaking to one another about it. So they are conspiring against you, prophet. They are uh, gossiping about you, man of God. And the Lord is telling his servant this. He says, everyone to his brother saying, come, I pray you and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. So they know exactly who this word is coming from. And yet they are conspiring against the prophet. They are 
talking about the prophet. That is going on. And let me tell you something. These are not people that don't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. These are the Lord's people. They know of him. They know what he expects of them in worship. They know what he expects of them by his word. They have a relationship with him, and they have had it. I'm talking nationally now, not necessarily individually, clearly, as they are all apostate and backslidden. And he says in verse 31, And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. How many in this apostate church are sitting before the Lord as his people? But look what happens here. And they hear thy words, prophet. He says, but they will not do them. Let me go around that block again. But they will not do them because the Lord Jesus, I hear the Lord Jesus, King Jesus saying, those that love me do what? They do my commandments. Anybody know the word of the Lord on this morning? But they will not do them. For with their mouth, this reminds you of when the prophet Isaiah prophesies this in the 29th chapter, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Put a mental pin on that. I would highlight that. I would underline that. Put an asterisk, parentheses, whatever you have to do. This is critical. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Thank you for the firepower of the Holy Ghost on this morning, that I have not slipped in slippery ways and backslidden from the firepower and presence of the Holy Ghost on this morning. For I certify you, it's not the bishop speaking to you this morning. I decrease that he might increase. It is the Holy Ghost speaking to us on this morning. He says, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. He said, you're just like that to them. You're soothing to them. He said, for they hear thy words, but they do not do them. Come on somebody in the Holy Ghost on this morning. And many that are going to our churches here in the United States of America and the nations of the world, and I'm connected to pastors and shepherds and bishops all over the world, and I'm telling you, many that go to our churches, they are sitting before us, and they say they are with us with their mouths, but when they leave us, prophets, pastors, those of you that are in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, we know that they will not do them. And that is why our country is coming under judgment, and the nations of the world, and will stay under it until this entire apostate house is left desolate. Come on and get it in your spirit. This is not a game on this morning. Verse 33, for those of you just joined, there will be joining, uh, uh, of Ezekiel the 33rd chapter. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been, the, uh, hath, hath been among them. The Lord is saying, when they hear your words, but they will not do them. And they're saying with their lips that they are with you. And I love you. It's a pleasant, lovely song. And one that plays on a well instrument with all of their blandishments, with all of their kind words. And yet the Lord says, their mouth is with me, but their heart is far from me through the prophet Isaiah. And now we have the prophet Ezekiel asserting the same thing. And this is not the prophet Ezekiel saying this himself. This is the Lord saying this to and through the prophet Ezekiel to his generation of Israelites. We got to come on and get this in our spirit. Because what I'm saying by revelation of the Holy Ghost this morning to my generation of Americans is that we are in this same deplorable apostate condition condition in the majority of our churches in the United States of America and the world over. And what the Holy Ghost has laid on my heart to talk to us about, we're going to talk to, uh, we're going to talk concerning three pla three plagues that are prevailing in this apostate church. We're going to talk about three plagues this morning. It is not a subject and it is not a title. It is a reality and a revelation in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. We are going to talk about three plagues that are prevailing in this apostate church in the praying and Holy Ghost hope that many of you that are following these pernicious ways and these pernicious leaders whose judgment is soon and swift to come, that you will recover yourself out of the snare of the enemy and you will come into firepower and Holy Ghost led churches like Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas and many others and you will come out of these apostate church for it is certain that our Father in Heaven means to bring these churches who think they're, who think they're rich and they have no need and they need no physician 
revelation he tells the, he tells the churches in revelation the second chapter and the third he said listen you don't know that you're blind and poor and deaf and lame and dumb you don't know that you are in a spiritually deplorable condition but this six foot two high yellow prophet from detroit michigan has been sent to tell the churches of the united states of america and the nations of the world that you are in a plorable spiritual condition many of you and you think because you have money you think because you have big buildings and you say bishop you sound kind of i am in the righteous indignation of the holy ghost and i'm telling you if you see it through me then i'm what then you have to wonder yourself i already know but you have to wonder about my heavenly father in his heart in heaven and that is why his wrath is pouring upon this nation because his holiness will not be violated continuously and not answer his holiness demands his wrath when his people will not answer the law of his word will not answer the commands of his word will not ap answer the apodictic command thou shalt or thou shalt not and whenever we refuse to answer him and live like his sovereignty is not over his live like like his power we're not subject to his power whenever we when we whenever we begin to live as if he is not there and what he says has no bearing upon our lives baby you might as well set yourself and get ready because his wrath will fall on your church it will fall men on your households it will fall parents on your children as we've seen in Uvalde Texas it will fall upon you you say Bishop I can't believe you just said that I know it's super highly and egregiously inflammatory and I'm telling you we our nation is open and we how many school shootings have we had now how many mosques have been shot up how many there was a time when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s we would laugh you under the table and I told one of my clients the other day if you even suggested that they would be shooting up our churches and shooting up our schools and shooting up but let me tell you something when we as a nation go back from king jesus and the way of his kingdom and we refuse to answer the god of abraham isaac and israel whose son is jesus christ and make him lord of our nation and lord of our communities and lord of our individual lives we are leaving ourselves open for these type of attacks we are leaving ourselves open unto demonic forces it is not the lord that does this evil for the apostle james certifies us by revelation i do not do evil to man the lord says i can't even be tempted with it it is not the lord that caused the shooting in uvalde, uh, uvalde texas and other shootings that we've had uh in buffalo new york and all of these other places and i'm ministered in new york and pastor for 23 years and i'm telling you it is not the lord that is doing this evil to his people but when we refuse his help when we refuse his word when we refuse the hand of his protection when we act and we live as if he does not matter he cannot do anything for us because we he, he, in order if he, if he did something for us he'd be overriding our will and what many of us want we want to we want to put him on the shelf as a genie in a bottle lord just do for me when i listen if he allows that then he's serving you and not the other way around and the word of the lord is clear we have not been placed there for the Lord to serve us. We have been placed there to serve him. According to Romans the 12th chapter in the first verse, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is our reasonable service. And you want to blame the police, and you want to blame this, and you want to blame that, and you want to blame the teachers, and you want to blame the HOA, and you want to blame uh, this God and that God, and you want to blame God, and you want to blame his son, and you want to blame his spirit, and you want to blame everybody wants to blame, but you don't want to take accountability, those of you that are lost, unbelieving, outside of the commonwealth of the faith, who are not in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, who have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to blame everybody, but you don't want to take accountability account for your own sin. You don't want to take account for your own waywardness. You don't want to take account for your extreme and egregious non-proximity to the God that you're asking to save you and to protect you. You don't want a relationship with him, but you want his blessing. You don't want his heart, unbeliever, uh, apostate, uh, 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 backslider. You don't want his heart, but you want his hand, and that's never going to happen. I'm here to tell you as a prophet and servant of the Lord, that is never going to happen. The only you're going to start receiving his hand when you first start receiving his heart. Bishop, how do you know that? I know that because I can read when the Lord Jesus said, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Conjunctive word, and his righteousness. That means proximity and right standing in relationship with him. You got to come into close proximity with him. The apostle Paul told the Athenians when he was preaching unto them, he said, as one of your own poets have said, in him we live and move and have our being. Until United States of America, we get in him, live and move and have our being. We are going to continue to be plagued by these type of massacres and incidents and you say Bishop it's not always good it is going to always be like this until we get in the kingdom of the Lord by repenting and accepting his son and being baptized in the Holy Ghost this is a strong word on this morning this is not for the faint of heart that's why most of the time we're on here preaching with very few and folks will come on and go off because you are not ready United States of America and the nations of the world for this kind of potent and powerful and profound word yet you are not ready to hear the truth you don't want to hear the truth if I was preaching about housing, cars, and land, and how the Lord's going to bless your little spirit and bless your little kids, let me tell you something. I'd be lying, because Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah, how are these false prophets going to preach to a people that despise me, saying blessing and peace, where there is no blessing and peace? The Lord Jesus, I hear him saying, I didn't come to send peace on earth but a sword. It is non-negotiable. It is a tenable argument. There is no argument here. Here. You cannot defend yourself against, there is no argument against the word of the Lord. And you can sit up there and be mad and cuss and scream and say whatever you want to say. These horses, these footmen are now turned into horses and chariots and they are riding upon our nation, the nation of the world. Them four mighty spirits of the apocalypse are riding on our nations and the nation of the world. And you mere human mortals, you have no power over this. You are subject to it, whether you want to be or not. It doesn't matter. From the king to the farmer from the front door to the back door from the white house to the state house to the local house to the church house to your house to the outhouse all nations all mere mortals are subject to the power of the sovereign God of Abraham Isaac and Israel whose son is Jesus Christ we are going to talk about three plagues prevailing in the apostate church on this morning listen to me if we have any hope in this world it is the body of Christ that is our hope in this world listen we have got to get this in our spirit if we have any hope in this world, listen to me carefully, apostate. Listen to me carefully, unbeliever. Listen to me carefully, backslider. If you have any hope in this world, and body of Christ, please hear me and be reminded carefully, if this world has any hope, we have to do according to Isaiah, the 58th chapter and the first verse, we have to cry loud and spare not. We have to lift up our voice like a trumpet. We have to lift up our voices like trumpets, like a trumpet, and we have to we and we have to show America its sin, and we have to show the nations of the world their transgression if they have any hope. Bishop, you are mighty confident in this on this morning. You would be absolutely right because I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. If this world has any hope, it is not in Muhammad, it is not in Harry Krishna, it is not in Joe Biden, and it is not in Donald Trump, it is not in any past, present, uh, or future president. It is not any past past, present, or future spirit, king, queen, uh, 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 icon, idol, uh, uh, personality, it is in none of that. If we have any hope, it is only going to be in Christ Jesus, because the word of the Lord is true when it says they are going to look upon them whom they have pierced, and they are going to be mournful. Come on and get it in your spirit. And the nations of the world in the Lord Jesus' second coming, you are going to look upon the one that you have pierced, the one that you have crucified, and all hands have been guilty in this measure. You can blame it on Rome of that generation, and you can blame it on time. You can blame it on Israel of that generation. But baby, since day one when man fell in the Garden of Eden, all of us have been guilty right from the womb. And this is what makes the word of the Lord true when it says all have fallen and come short of the glory of God. I'm telling you, I feel like running up out of here on this morning. We got to get this revelation down in our spirit. Many of you think that you're not guilty, but you are guilty. You are guilty because the Lord has made you guilty. He has concluded all men in sin. He said all have fallen and come short of my glory. And this is why we need the Lord Jesus Christ and this is why I'm preaching him continuously. The Apostle Paul told the, the church at Ephesus, 
I have not ceased to warn you day and night for the space of three years. It is going on three years that I have been warning us in Dallas, Texas now. We church, we body of Christ must cry loud and spare not. We must lift up our collective voice like a trumpet in Zion if this world is to have any hope. Go with me to 1 Corinthians uh, the 6th chapter. Let's go to 1 Corinthians the 6th chapter. I don't need you to take my word for it. I want us to look at it in the word, Lord. The Holy Ghost is speaking to us on this morning. I hope he's touching somebody else in on this broadcast besides me. We are here to worship. We are here to worship in spirit and in truth. We are here to worship in the word of the Lord, not just in the vain imagination of our minds. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. We are going to read the first eight verses, and I want us to pay careful attention and forensically to the wording here. He says, we're beginning, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter in the first verse, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Listen to what the apostle is saying here. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? So all of you sitting there talking about, you know, you judging me and this and that, the saints are going to judge the world in the firepower of the Holy Ghost in the discernment and spiritual intelligence of the Holy Ghost. We are telling you what's acceptable to the Lord and what's not and what's not acceptable to the Lord. All of you pro-abortionists and all of you pro-gay community conspirators and all of you that sympathize, put a mental pin on that. We're going to talk about sympathizing this morning. All of you that want to call evil good and good evil, your word is irrelevant. Everybody's walking around talking about I'm in my truth. I'm in my truth. Your truth is irrelevant to the absolute truth of the word of God you need to get it in your spirit and you need to do it yesterday. We the saints do judge the world. Now that adjudication, you have to think legally and of legal terms here, that adjudication is not to put you in heaven or hell because we're here preaching to keep you out of hell. We're here preaching to keep you out of the ultimate lake of fire. We are here so the exact opposite can occur and that's why we're ambassadors giving you the word of the Lord because we are not adjudicating you to heaven or hell. We don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. What we're adjudicating is what is acceptable to the Lord. This is what the word of the Lord meant when the when the Lord Jesus told his disciples, if you loose anything on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. If you bind anything on earth, it will be bound in heaven. Come on and get it in your spirit. He has given us power to judge the nations of the world by the word of righteousness and the spirit of Christ and the spirit of righteousness that he is placed in us by the indwelling of his precious and our precious Holy Ghost. You better get it in your spirit, you five foolish virgins, while you have a chance and convert and be healed in the Holy Ghost with the balm of Gilead, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the hope and the only hope and the only answer of the world because of the spirit of the Lord in us and if the world verse 2 shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters he's talking about adjudicating here we don't need to go to the legal courts of the world we only go there when they draw us there but we're not to draw one another there can you not judge the smallest matters yes because we have the firepower of the Holy Ghost and the righteous judge the holy judge the ultimate judge the Lord Jesus Christ as the father as he has testified the father's committed all judgment into his hand he is worthy and able to judge between us believers we don't have to take this uh, we don't have to take abortion to the world we know that it's abomination in the word of the Lord we don't have to take homosexuality and lesbianism before the world we know that this is an abomination to the Lord lying gossiping causing division amongst the brother we have the word of the Lord and we know all these things are an abomination why are we taking it to the court of public opinion when we have the word of the Lord and we judge all things spiritual with spiritual I'll tell you why because many of us are in the firepower and Holy Ghost and the rest of you have been watered down and compromised before the world. Put a mental pin on sympathy and compromise because those are two plagues that are plaguing the church that we're getting ready to talk about on this morning in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not that we shall judge angels, he says in verse 3. Now 
we're judging angelic powers because we are the ones telling Satan and his forces, you can't come any further. What you're doing is illegal. You cannot do that. We are preaching against angelic powers. We are redeemed. They are not. When Satan and his two-thirds fell, they were committed to the lake of fire. When we fell, the Lord Jesus came down and died for us. I feel like jumping out this window on this morning. That we might have a right to the tree of life. We are redeemed. And there shall be a highway there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The fool, the wicked shall not pass over it. The unclean shall not pass over this highway of holiness. Neither shall the fool fool around therein. The King James says you won't be able to commit error therein. You won't be able to sin in your sinful ways therein. But the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. The redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. Those that have been restored by the firepower of the Holy Ghost and indwelt by the Lord's presence, power, his spirit, his kingdom, his will, his desire, his sovereign power in his way. We are the ones that are going to be in the highway of holiness and no one else. He says, how much more things that pertain to this life. We are the hope and the answer to this world, the body of Christ, because we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are indwelt by his spirit. Come on and get it in your spirit on this morning. I hope the Holy Ghost is touching somebody in this war room besides me on this morning. If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak this to your shame, the apostle says. It is it so that there is not a wise man among you? And this apostate church, the answer is no. There's not a wise man amongst you. I don't have time to go back in it, but we've been preaching for the past uh, two years on this very thing where uh, you go to I, you go to Jeremiah listen the Lord says the stork knows her season knows her time listen but my people know not the judgment of the Lord he says where is their wisdom in? they are void because they do not have my spirit come on I don't have time to get back into it going on all the aforementioned platforms and you will be able to pick up those teachings but listen to me he said I speak this to your shame is it so that there's not a wise man among you in the body of Christ, yes, and I'm one of them, Bishop Demetrius Senegal, Bishop Clarence McClinton, and many others, and there's many women of God and many, all of the believers in the body of Christ, there are wise men and women of God amongst us, and there's a level of wisdom in the Holy Ghost that dwells in all of the Lord's children. We can judge this world, we can adjudicate our Father's word against this world, listen to me carefully, listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying to us on this morning. He says, no. Not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers? You apostate church are talking about gay, the gay community and abortion before the unbelievers? You are compromising with this? You are talk you are you are introducing your politics as a justification. You're introducing your own opinion and your own truth as a justification. You are clearly not in the body of Christ. You are in this apostate church. And all you pastors and bishops calling for unity in the church, you are not going to get it because this apostate church, these five foolish virgins, their spirits are in enmity with the five wise virgins. Oil, lamps. But no power in the Holy Ghost. No revelation. No, we're not going to have unity. Because you're not in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And there's only going to be unity when you repent and come into the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Now, therefore, verse 7, there is utterly a fault among you. What is that fault? Because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that's your brethren. It is a defrauding, listen to me carefully in the Holy Ghost, it is a defrauding when you are compromising with everything that the Lord says in his word is unholy. Let me tell you something. If your pastor supports gay rights, your pastor is wrong according to the scripture. I said it and I'll say it to his face. And if you give him this video, I definitely will have said it to his face. But I will say it in person. Your pastor, your bishop is wrong. Your shepherd is a false prophet if he's got to go to the court of public 
opinion to see what it says about abortion. Abortion is wrong. Who gave you the right? You women talk about, oh, I have a right over right. You don't have no right over anything. You have transforming creative power. You don't have original creative power. You did not create that life in your stomach, Bishop. How do you know? Because I hear the word of the Lord saying to the prophet Jeremiah and to this prophet, before I, you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And it is that knowing that makes that life belong in the hands of the Lord. I'm, tell, I'm trying to calm my little spirit down in here, but the firepower of the Holy Ghost is raging in my spirit. How dare you sit up there talking about you have a right over this life. The Lord knew these babies before they he placed them in your womb, and he's the one that placed them. You did not, woman. You have no right. You have no right but to surrender your life to the Lord and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and to do with that holy and sanctified life what he has called you to do. You better get a revelation in Sister Hannah who's sitting before the Lord and here comes the priest supposing she's drunk but she's crying out because her her this other her husband's other wife can have all these children she can have none. See some of you because you may you can have babies so if but what if the Lord shut up your barren womb. I have sister friends in the Lord they could not have babies and they labored and prayed all night light long like sister Hannah and finally the Lord opened up their womb and gave them a child. You go ask them do you have a right to terminate that life. They will go up one side of you and down the other because baby they prayed all night long. I think what the Lord needs to do in our generation is shut all your wounds up so you can't have any babies and maybe when you can't have any and all of a sudden you realize you can't build a family structure. Maybe many of you when you're that desolate will get desperate enough to get down on your face in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. Surrender and yield your life to the Lord Jesus and then he'll bless you with that gift when you learn that it belongs to him. The problem with pro-abortionists is the life does not belong to you. It does not belong to the judges and it does not belong to the court of public opinion. Yeah, I'm telling you, I feel like preaching in here on this morning and I am not going to sit the preacher on the bench because I'm sick and tired of you all taking this in the public court of opinion and calling yourself the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a den of vipers and thieves in this generation, especially you leaders. You all are not in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You are in the weak, watered-down, cotton balls and water reality of your own spirit. You are too weak to lead the church. You are too spineless and restless to lead the church. You don't have a backbone of steel. You got a backbone of tissue, tissue and cotton balls. Get it down in your spirit. Now, I'm not playing games up here in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You're too spineless to lead the church. You got, like King Saul, go with whatever the people say, but I'm not that kind of prophet, I'm not that kind of pastor, and I'm not that kind of preacher. I'm telling you, the Lord is getting ready to bring all of your little unsanctified churches down to the dust and into the sides of hell. You better get it in your spirit, and all you preachers that refuse to preach the word of the Lord, you're coming down too. You are coming down too. Your judgment is swiftly approaching. You better get it in your spirit. You thought the Lord, you thought there was a clearing in 2000. And 21 uh, and in 2022 you fasten your seatbelt baby because in 2022 the rest of it in 2023 all the way to 2030 there are many more of you getting ready to be released from your pulpits and I'm not talking about just in shame and scandal many of you are going in a metal box get your eulogies prepared all of you that are left behind because the dead baby are getting ready to bury the dead I'm telling you I'm in the firepower <laughs> And revelation on the Holy Ghost this morning. So the first thing uh, that the Holy Ghost has laid on my heart, listen to me. Covetous inevitably leads to compromise. I told you to put a middle pin on compromise. Many of you, listen to me. Your covetousness, listen to what the prophet says. He said... For with their mouth, verse 31 of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetous. This is greedy gain. This is gain. Many of you, you don't preach what the Holy Ghost is telling you to preach because you know they will stop giving to your church. So what? I'd rather please the Lord. We don't even have a building right now, and I'm not even sweating it at all. Matter of fact, I don't want a church full of apostate people. That's why we're choosing not to get a building until I'm certain I got those that are and the firepower of the Holy Ghost sitting before me, then we'll think about getting a building. But I am not going to get a building and pay bills for people whose mouths are with the Lord, but their heart is far from Him. Who say that their mouth is with them, but you have no intention of doing what He's telling you to do because you're going after your greedy gain. And this covetousness, this seeking after gain inevitably, inevitably leads the church to compromise. Our gospel is compromised because you false prophets, you false pastors, 
you false shepherds, according to the word of the Lord of Jer uh, uh, through the prophet Jeremiah, you all have become unprofitable shepherds and servants. You are not vessels of honor. You are vessels of dishonor in the hands of the Lord. And it is because of that compromise, it is because of that seeking after gain, you have compromised the gospel. You don't preach repentance. You don't preach the need to be delivered from the fire powers of hell. You don't preach the new creation rea reality of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You preach what is soothing houses and cars and land, socialism and materialism and humanism. You preach so that you can soothe the soul. You want to be user friendly instead of in the fire power of the Holy Ghost and your preaching and your days are coming to an end. You are walking in slippery places according to the prophet Isaiah. You are walking like wells without water, clouds without rain according to Bishop Jude. You are your swift destruction is coming upon you according to the apostle Paul and the apostle Peter. You better get it down in your spirit because I'm telling you the Holy Ghost isn't missing in me this morning. I certify you I'm not missing him on this morning. Listen to me. <laughs> compromise forsakes the anointing. This is the danger of it. It forsakes the anointing. It casts the anointing off as an old raggedy garment. That is what many of you are doing in this apostate church, you leaders. You are casting the anointing off because you're your compromised. You're casting it off like a filthy rag and a filthy garment. But the Lord's anointing is not a filthy garment and a filthy rag. That is not scriptural, but I tell you what is scriptural. Your righteousness is like filthy the rags before the Lord. The truth of your righteousness, you fake leaders, you apostate leaders, your righteousness before the Lord, what you're preaching, what you're teaching, what you're teaching your congregations and suggesting them, and even your manner of living is like filthy rags. The Greek image there is of a woman's menstrual rag. Now translate that again. Your righteousness is as filthy as a woman's menstrual rags. Bishop, you're kind of bold this morning. I know, because I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and I know you apostates and you unbelievers don't understand it. But that's okay. Long as me and the Holy Ghost do, that's all that matters. You'll get the revelation after a while, or you'll end up in the lake of fire, and this is certain. When you compromise, when you're seeking after gain, you are going to spiritually compromise. All of you that say that you're Christians, all of you, because you are certainly not believers. All of you liars in this apostate church, you say that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Liars, 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 liars. Because you say it with your lips, but according to Ezekiel the 33rd chapter, you do not do the word of the Lord. It is your covetousness that has led to your compromise. You don't tell your family members about the Lord, and you certainly don't tell them about the need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't talk to them about going to hell. You don't talk to them about being pardoned in the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Sins, you don't speak to them about being pardoned by their sins, by their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. You never even mention it. You are a religious liars. That's what you are. You are sick, dumb, lame, poor, blind, calling yourself the church when you are Satan's counterfeit. Get it down in your spirit. And when you compromise, compromise forsakes the anointing. I can't stress it enough, like casting it off as an old garment. Turn with me to Isaiah, the 59th chapter. I'm telling you, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost this morning. I don't know about many of you playing church, but baby, here at Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, we are not playing the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the true church. We are the manifold wisdom of God to the intent that the principalities and powers of the world will see our display of holiness. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Anybody know the word of the Lord on this morning? Listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying to us on this morning. Isaiah, the 59th chapter. All you got to do is back up a few books. Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Let's see what the Lord is saying to the prophet Isaiah. We're going to read the first and the second verse there. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. That's for all of you apostates, unbelievers especially, and backslidden ones. The Lord can save you. You are not too dirty for him to save you. You are not too far gone for him to save you. Matter of fact, the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, of which the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees of, Jesus, of King Jesus' day were guilty. And many of you, scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, you're guilty today. The Lord said of you, you go about the world seeking one proselyte. And after you've gotten that proselyte, that disciple, that student of your wicked ways, you make them twofold more the child of the devil than yourself. But I'm calling all of you proselytes. 
away from all of these destructive demonic shepherd heads and I'm calling you into the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved. Confess him. Believe him in your heart. Confess him publicly with your mouth. Ask him to, to uh, indwell you with this spirit and the Holy Ghost will come in you and the firepower of the Holy Ghost will come in your spirit and you shall be changed in a way that nobody will have to tell you that you're a believer. Come on and get it in your spirit. I'm trying to preach you out of this out of these foolish virgin churches. I'm trying to preach you away from these apostate churches. Come on and get it in your spirit. The Lord says, neither is his ear heavy, verse 1, Isaiah 59, that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause right there and let that sink deep down in our spirits. But your iniquities, your sin, your wickedness, you know that you won't repent for because your preachers won't tell you to repent. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. So all of you talking about we're all the Lord's children, stop that foolish satanic lie. We are not all the Lord's children, only those that do his commandments and are led by his spirit and receive his correction and his chastisement as you hear coming through me now by the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, if you don't, if you despise my chastening, you are bastards and you are not my sons and daughters. You are ill, legitimate children. I can't stress it enough. Bishop, where'd you get that from? It's in your Bible and I'm not going to do your reading for you. You study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I am not going to do your work for you. And that's why you like these apostate churches, because you can go in there and be entertained and they got all the worship lyrics on the screen for you and they got all the word on the screen for you. You don't have to read your Bibles. Many of you walking in these apostate churches with no Bible in your hand. Oh, Bishop, I got the Bible on my phone. You don't read that because I don't see it in you and you ain't got no firepower of the Holy Ghost so the phone Bible ain't doing you no more good than the actual one. Get it down in your spirit. You all are fooling yourself. You're self-deceived. You're deceiving your own hearts and your wickedness is desperately wicked and deceitful above all. You do not know your heart but the Lord does and he knows your heart is going to lead you right to the lake of fire. You better hear what this prophet is saying to you on this morning he says and conjunctive word your sins verse 2 have hid his face from you that he will not hear your sins have hid his face from you unbeliever apostate backslider he will not hear he will not hear your prayer. He will not answer your prayer. Your sins have separated you from your God and your sins have hid his face, which is his power and his presence, his revelation and his wisdom. And this brings to pass the word of the Lord iterated through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostle Paul. You, they have eyes that see but do not perceive. They have ears that hear but do not understand. Do you hear what the Lord is saying? But your iniquities have separated between you and I. I have hid my face from you because of your sins. This is why our schools can be shot up. This is why our synagogues can be shot up. This is why our my first of all these synagogues and mosques, these mosques shouldn't even exist and all these places of idol worship and all these temples of satanic measures and, and the spirit of antichrist all of this stuff shouldn't exist in the United States of America we shouldn't have one mosque here we have it because you all have compromised the word of God the only thing that should exist in the United States of America is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ there should not listen we can have synagogues here because our Israelite brothers are coming to the Lord outside of that the only other houses of worship that should be here should be in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. But the reason we have mosques, the reason we have mosques, the reason we have all of these temples and all of these false gods of every ethnicity all over the world is because like King Solomon we have left the purity of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel whose son is Jesus Christ and we have come in to the satanic spirit of Antichrist that everything goes and we can reach God by all different measures. The Lord Jesus Christ, I hear him say Saying, no, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. I'm telling you, I feel like preaching in here. I'm trying to behave my little spirit in the Holy Ghost, but I'm telling you, his firepower is burning too hot in me on this morning, and I will not compromise the gospel. I don't care what y'all do to me or say about me. You're already talking about me anyway. Go ahead and talk, baby, because you won't be talking when you hit the lake of fire. You will be completely silent, and the only voice you'll hear is the voices screaming in torment next to yours and above yours. Come on and get it in your spirit. 
But listen to me carefully. Let's go to Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. Go one more book over from Isaiah. Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. Come on, we're going to get these blueprints in the Holy Ghost on this morning. Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. Come on and let's get these blueprints in our spirit, believers. Come on, we got to be armed in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, we're going to read the 20th to the 25th verse. Listen forensically, declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah is talking to the Israelites. I'm talking to the Americans. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. And he's not talking physically here. He's talking spiritually. In other words, your eyes see, but they don't perceive. Your ears hear, but there's no understanding. That's what he's referring to here. Now, what does he want you to hear? Fear ye not me? Question mark. America, we don't fear the Lord. That's what we're saying to him. We don't fear him. You don't fear the Lord. Fear ye not me, question mark, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? First lady, we were talking about that yesterday in our date night. Uh, uh, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree? You know what he's reminding us of? His, un, his inimitable and indomitable power. You won't fear me. You won't tremble at my presence. The one who placed the uh, listen, he says, "Won't you place the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree?" That means a decree that never ends. Come on and get it in your spirit that it cannot pass it, even though it might want to, and though the waters thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? The Lord's reminding us of his sovereign power here through the prophet. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart that they are revolted and gone. Not just revolted, but you have taken off apostates from the principles of holiness in the word of the Lord. You have built your churches upon the foundation of compromise. Come on and get it in your spirit. You have built your lives on the foundation of compromise. If the president says it, it's good enough for me. If my mom and my daddy said it, it's good enough for me. When the Lord Jesus said you have to hate your mother, father, sister, brother, that means your politician. He says your spouse. He says even your own life if you're going to be my disciple. But you all don't live by that and you say you're believers. You're not believers. You're liars. Let me tell you what the scripture says according to 1 John in the second chapter. You all, are, I mean 1 John, uh, the first chapter, you all are a bunch of liars. You are revolted and you are gone. Please hear the Holy Ghost on this morning. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, even though your schools are getting shot up, even though the White House has been overran, even though it has been assaulted, even though February 23, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, and we're hearing wars and rumors of wars, according to Matthew, the 24th chapter, even though we, our schools are being shot up and our supermar supermarkets are being shot up, yet Americans we will not fear the word of the Lord. We will not fear the presence of the Lord. We will not fear and tremble at the power of the Lord. We will not reverence him in our White House, our State House, our Church House, our local house. We got demonic pastors coming up there now praying to these false gods and idol gods of Sheba and the gods of death. We got them being hung in New York City on our buildings. We got all of this satanic power going on and you wonder why your schools are being shot up. I'll tell you why your schools are being shot up. Because you won't tremble at the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. Get it down in your spirit and do it yesterday. I'm not joking around here and neither is the Holy Ghost and you better get it down in your spirit. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God. Verse 24 of Jeremiah the fifth chapter that giveth rain both the former and latter in his season he reserveth unto the appointed weeks of the heart he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest your iniquities have turned away these things let me go around that block again because you still ain't hearing you're still not perceiving and you're still not understanding United States of America your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good 
things from you, like our schools and our synagogues and our churches being protected, our White House being protected. Our sins have separated us from the protective hand of the Lord. He says in Psalms 91, that's the blueprint when we make El Elyon, the Most High God, our habitation. You got to dwell with him. You got to stay right on his word, his presence, his kingdom, his power, and his son. If you want his hand of protection, if you want his hand of blessing upon our White House, our state house, our church house, our houses, we have got to stay in him because if we do not, he will remove his hand from us as we are already seeing. And your sins have withholding good things from you. It is this first plague of compromise that has come in o that has come over our churches and over our nation that is withholding the blessing of the Lord's the blessing of the Lord from us. Get it down in your spirit and you need to do it as soon. I mean like yesterday, apostate church. You need to do it, President Biden, President Kamala, Vice President Kamala Harris, Senate, Congress, White House, House of Representatives, GOP, right wing, left wing, right hand, left hand. I don't care, and I'm not saying this disrespectfully, but you got to subject yourself in the fear of the Lord if you want his presence and his power to return to our nation, and it will not. I'm prophetically uttering in the firepower of the Holy Ghost now, his presence and his power will not come upon our nation again until we subjugate ourselves in reverential fear and trembling before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I'm preaching in this war room better than you all are getting the revelation and saying amen, but I'm going to preach anyhow. The next plague that's... Uh, that's prevailing in this apostate church is the plague of sentiment. Sentiment. You all are so sentimental. Oh, I just sympathize. I just sympathize. I sympath People don't need your sympathy. They need a word from the Lord, believers. And that's what this apostate church can't give. I'm praying for you. No, you're not. Because when you pray for somebody, the Lord will give you a revelation for them. As I have one for the United States of America and the nations of the world, as I have one for Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, where I serve as a presiding bishop and presiding prelate and pastor, as I shepherd this church, I, they know I'm praying for them because guess what? I have a revelation for them corporately and individually. When I tell people and I see them in the street, even complete strangers, we're praying for you. I'm praying for you because I have a word for you. And it is that word that many of you shirk back from. It is that word that causes you to run from me. Because you don't want that word to correct you. But if I had a word to soothe all of you, you'd want that word. But you don't want a word where you got to change and take accountability and responsibility for what you're doing with the Lord Jesus Christ. But you want all his protection. You want all his blessing. But his word through his prophets like myself, he is saying your sins and your wickedness and your transgressions have separated my good gifts from heaven. Come on, Apostle James. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of the lights. It comes that they come down from heaven from the father lights he said who in whom is no variableness neither the shadow of turning every good and perfect gift comes from my father above whose son is jesus christ and it comes by his spirit in the firepower of the holy ghost and when you're in sin unrepented sin you don't have access to his good gifts you better get it in your spirit america you better get it in your spirit, apostate church, backslider, unbeliever. Sentiment leads to sympathizing. You all are sympathizing with the gay community. You're sympathizing with the transgenderism of this country. You're, you're sympathizing with these laws that have been passed that are wicked. Salts on one man and one woman being the constitution of marriage. Now we want two men together and two women together. I don't care how much you put this in this country. I don't even care if you make it law. Let me tell you something. The only thing you're going to do is cause the wrath of the Lord to pour more upon this nation. Because America, the cup of your iniquity is full and the Lord is answering it by his wrath, and he doesn't care what you think or feel about it. You better pick up Psalms too. You all are conspiring against the Lord, Je against our Father in heaven and the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is sitting there according to Psalms 2, laughing at you in derision. He is laughing at the kings of this earth. He is laughing at the, at the political and corporate powers of the earth. He is laughing at you in derision, and he is warning you, kiss the Son. Come into right relationship with the Son, lest, ye, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. You, all of you that say you're, you're Christians, you better pick up your Bible. All of you in this apostate church, 
Read Psalms 2. Give it to your local leaders. Give it to your state leaders of all fields, of all men. Give it to your White House representatives. Give it to the President of the United States. I'm Catholic. I read the Bible, but I don't care, President Biden. You don't have any Holy Ghost, sir. Neither do you, Kamala Harris. And until we get leaders that are in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, or will at least in reverential fear make themselves subject to the prophetic powers, this nation will continue on its course of destruction and its course of plagues. Get it in your spirit. And there is no name under heaven that's going to save the United States of America but the name of Jesus. And this is why I stated earlier in the presence and power of the Holy Ghost believers, we are the hope and the answer to the world. What is being seen in us, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ in his unadulterated word, non-watered down, non-filtered, straight with no chaser, fire, power, presence of the Holy Ghost word is what is going to save this world. Come on and get it in your spirit and do it yesterday. I know I'm preaching better than you all got an amen in your spirit, but I'm going to preach on anyhow. Sentiment is the second plague. Compromise is the first plague. Sentiment leading to sympathy. Oh, I just sympathize. You know what this forsake? Surrendering. And that's why our schools are being shot up. That's why our churches and our supermarkets are being shot up. You all are sympathizing. The cops over there, listen, these men, oh, he's just got a BB gun. And he, he's just a little boy playing with the BB gun. They were sympathizing. They were acting in emotion. They were being led by their emotions. Because you all got them in a corner. Oh, the police are shooting. And I'm not saying they aren't shooting unjustly. But it's not all of them. And now you got them so shook that when they're supposed to go in and get somebody, they don't feel like they can because they're too busy listening to your word instead of one of them officers getting a revelation of the Holy Ghost. Come on and get it in your spirit. You got the police so shook now, they didn't know what to do yesterday. I mean the other day, well, you Valdi, Texas. And now you all are blaming them. Now you're all a jump. But a minute ago, it was defund the police. They are doomed if they do and doomed if they don't, according to public opinion. What I say you police officers ought to do is bow before the Lord Jesus Christ, open up your shifts in prayer, and let the Holy Ghost lead you on what you're to do with every single incident and every single person. That's what all police officers, I'm not against you. There was a time I didn't like you because I was young and stupid, but baby, I grew up in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I support having police departments. I support the both police, but I do not let the police lead me. I let the firepower of the Holy Ghost lead me, and I'm saying to every officer who puts on the uniform, if you have any sense, sir, if you have any sense, ma'am, let the Holy Ghost lead you, because these people are talking about you anyway, and you're doomed if you do, and doomed if you don't, so take the Lord's word and throw theirs out the window. That's what I, that's my wisdom in the Holy Ghost for all police officers across this nation. Every chief of police, every chief captain, sergeant, uh, uh, whatever your rank is, whatever, every duty officer, every detective. I got many friends that are detectives. And please, uh, let me tell you something. Every fire chief, every firefighter needs to be in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Every doctor, every lawyer, you got to come on and get in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You need to listen to the word of the Lord because the sentiment in the public square and in the public domain is leading to sympathizing and this is forsaking surrendering to the power of the Holy Ghost you know you won't surrender you won't surrender you're asking everybody to surrender to you but you won't surrender to the Lord it's not gonna happen President Biden Vice President Kamala Harris past present future president even the presidents that are and vice presidents that are soon to come should the Lord tarry. You don't you want everybody to listen to you. But you don't want to fear and tremble before my father in heaven. You don't want to respect his word, but you want everybody to respect your word. That's not gonna work like that. It's not going to work like that. And these incidents where these people are going and shooting up everything, it is a disrespect to your word. It is a disrespect to the United States of America. It is a disrespect because you all are disrespecting in our leadership here in this country. You won't listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. You write his prophets off. You write his bishops off like myself. You write it. How many of you have watched my broadcast in the White House? Probably none of you. But you want the Lord's hand to bless you. But your sins and your iniquities are withholding his blessed hand from you. Because you don't want his heart. And it's going to stay like this. So you don't have to listen to my broadcast. You don't have to listen to me at all. But I'm telling you what's not going to leave here is the plagues that are coming upon this nation. Get it down in your spirit. There's no surrendering. Oh, you acknowledge. 
Many of you acknowledge this is what he's saying to the prophet Ezekiel. Oh yeah, they say they're with you. They say, oh, you're like a lovely song and one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. Their lips are with the prophet. But their heart is not with the Lord of the prophet. Their lips are with the prophet. But their heart is not with the Lord of the prophet. Therefore, they have become deceptive liars. Like many, like this generation in the United States of America. Our nation has become a nation of deceived liars. And the word truly speaks of our nation when it says they go about deceiving and being deceived. Because they're all liars. The Lord said, I'm going to send you strong delusion that you would believe a lie. So you'll acknowledge. You'll even like. As in Facebook and all the social media. You'll put a like on my post. But you won't go and do what the preacher is telling you to do. You won't hear the Holy Ghost and go do what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do through the preacher. You'll like it. You got good sentiment. You might even sympathize. But you won't surrender. You'll even mimic. You know what? I heard Bishop Cox say another day, but you won't live it. You won't live nothing. Your preachers, are, they won't live nothing. They'll acknowledge it. They'll like what the Lord is saying. They'll even mimic what the Lord's saying. But when it's time to live it, when it's time to defend life, you're for abortion. When it's time to call homosexual and lesbianism across the pulpit an abomination before the Lord, you compromise because of your sentiment, because you're sympathizing. Oh, well, you know, the Lord loves... No, baby, the Lord might love you. He don't love your homosexual and lesbian lifestyle. He don't love your pro-abortion lifestyle. He don't love your wicked so-called religious leaders. He don't love your wicked political leaders. He doesn't love the wickedness of your political Political leaders of your corporate leaders and of your church leaders he may love them how do you know Bishop for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life he may love the individual but he does not love your sinful lifestyle religious leaders political leaders corporate leaders please understand me carefully with clarity he does not love your sinful and abominable lifestyles in this apostate church in this apostate government in the apostate business world all you secular heads he might love you he does not love your abominable lifestyles and your abominable lifestyles are separating your his goodness from you and from your land I don't care how much you prophesy in your political discourse and in your uh, unbelieving discourse your secular discourse your your legal discourse your corporate and business discourse you're not going to procure the favor of my father in heaven no more than Satan is come on and get it in your spirit turn with me with Romans the sec to 12th chapter you're not going to procure procure it until your sympathy and your sympathizing your sentiment and your sympathizing turns to surrendering Romans the first chapter in the 12th verse and many of you know it by heart I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good acceptable and perfect will of the Lord for I say through the grace given unto to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. What is he saying? Surrender your truth for his absolute truth. Surrender your false idol worship for his true worship. For God, for the Lord Jesus said, God is a spirit. His Father in heaven, the eternal Godhead is a spirit. And they that were, he's talking about eternal substance now, deity. In the Greek, it's homoousia. He's talking about the eternal Godhead as of one substance. And those that worship this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ by the power of his Holy Ghost, will worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> He 
he says that we're not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, but to think soberly. That's the problem with our religious leaders, our corporate leaders, our political leaders. You all are not thinking soberly. You're not in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You're in the vain imagination of your own wisdom and your own heart because you don't want to surrender your lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to keep on living in wickedness and sin and expecting the Lord to bless you in our nation and your families. It's not going to happen. It is not happening and it will continue to not happen until you surrender. According as God hath dwelt, hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's given every man who chooses a measure of faith, but you all have placed your faith in your president and your state leader and your house of representative leader, your congressional leader. You have placed your hope in your pastor. But your hope and your trust and your absolute truth and your worship of spirit and truth needs to be in the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Romans 12, 1 through, three, it, 1 through 3, the first and third verse, is the chief statement of surrender before the Lord. I beseech you, the Apostle Paul says to the church, this apostate church, because it was an apostate church then, it's one now body of Christ then, and it's the body of Christ now. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world in sentiment, which leads to sympathy, which keeps you from surrendering to the word, the spirit, the power, and the, uh, and the presence of the Lord. He says that you may prove, what be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How? By the Spirit of God dwelling in you, and by the word of the Lord that he brings into your remembrance, in your, in, into our remembrance and into teaching us the revelation of our Father in heaven, which is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and get it down in your spirit. And that's Romans, uh, Romans the 12th chapter, the first and the third verse, is the chief statement of surrender. Let's go right over to Colossians. We're going to Colossians the third chapter as I hasten to a close here. Revel Colossians the third chapter. I told you we go through our Bible here at, at Cox Community Church. We're not playing with the word of God. Colossians the third chapter. Colossians the third chapter. We're going to read the first six verses. Colossians the third chapter. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Notice forensically the, the spiritual direction here. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's your politics, apostate church, your religious asceticism, your form of righteousness, instead of the worship of spirit of truth of the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ of your political leaders and your political affiliation. Come on, your organizational affiliations. He said, you don't set your heart on those things. You set your affection on things above. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. He's talking to all who are believers. Many of you, you're not dead. You're not this type of dead. He's talking about being dead to the world. You're still alive to the world and the world system, and the way the world does things, and listen to the word, the way the world says to do things, instead of the way the word of the Lord tells you to do it. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, that's homosexuality, lesbianism, effeminate uh, nature, and transgenderism. It's all summed up right there. Evil concupiscence and covetousness. There's that word again we saw in Ezekiel 33. Covetousness, which leads to compromise, which casts the anointing off as a filthy garment, which is what? idolatry. So when all of you are seeking after your gain, you're worshiping idolatrous gods. You're worshiping your idols. It could be your business partner. It could be your business leader. It could be your team leader in business. It could be your corporate CEO. It could be your shift leader, your supervisor. You are worshiping everybody but the God who is telling you to seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and then all of those natural things you need will be added unto you. Your covetousness is idolatry idolatry. And might I remind us, apostate church, that the scripture says rebellion as as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as what? 
iniquity and idolatry. You all are rebellious and stubborn, and you refuse to hear the word of the Lord. For which sake, here it is, for which things sake, those of you who live this consistent lifestyle in these evil ways, come on, evil concupiscence is evil lust, like I have a right to abortion, that's evil concupiscence. It's in your Bible, people. You just don't understand it and how to translate. Therefore, you think that he's not talking to you pro-abortionists. Evil concupiscence is making decisions based upon right and the evil of your own lust and the own course of evil nature in you. I have a right to kill the baby. No, you do not. And listen to what the Lord says. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on I'm the children of disobedience. We are not all the children of God. Those of you who refuse to live by his word, you are the children of wrath and disobedience. You are not the children of God. Get it down in your spirit and do it yesterday. Go with me to Ephesians the fifth chapter. Ephesians the fifth chapter. Let's back up a book here and go to two books actually and go to Ephesians. You got to go pa back towards Philippians, back to Philippians to Ephesians. Ephesians the 5th chapter, we're going to read the 3rd to the 12th verse as I'm hastening to a close. I hope the Holy Ghost is touching somebody up in here in this war room on this morning besides me. Ephesians the 5th chapter, we are going to read the 3rd to the 12th verse, but fornication Look how we're starting off already. But fornication and all uncleanness or or covetousness. There it is again. All of you seeking your gain and whatever all you live for is the art of the deal. Come on, President Trump. You are in error. I can't shout it aloud enough. You're in error, but fornication, all uncleanness, that's homosexuality, lesbianism, that is a pro abortion, that is a thieving, lying, stealing, cheating, backstabbing, gossiping, all of it. All, all, all uncleanness. Not what you say is unclean, but what the Holy Ghost through his body of Christ says unclean. What the Lord says unclean by his word, his presence, his power, and his spirit. That is what is unclean, not what you all determine is unclean. Nor jesting, which are not convenient. Listen to what he says. No, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, apostate church. Come on, body of Christ, we need to be reminded here. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting, that's posturing, that's pump faking as we called it back in the day, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, uh oh, warning, 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 no whoremonger, Mm -hmm. He's not just talking about hoes and prostitutes. He's talking about you that are hoeing and prostituting the gift from right from the church. Pastors, false prophets, nor unclean person, nor covetous man. There's that word covetous now. Now he brings it not to the corporate, not only to the corporate level, but the individual level. Nor covetous man who is an, an who is an idolater. So not only not only did the apostle Paul preach this to the church at Colossae, he also preached it to the church at Ephesus. Hello, somebody, are you seeing the Holy Ghost here on this morning? Who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? You can't get any clearer than this. I don't know what you folks are waiting on. You can't get this language any clearer than it is. You have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God, the Father. When you live in these manners... Let no man deceive you, apostate pastor, shepherds, prophets, all you listening to them. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. There's that same identical language of the Apostle Paul to the church at Colossae, now showing up to the church at Ephesus. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost has him preaching it to all the church. Like I'm preaching it to all this church. Both apostate and believing alike. 
Come on and get it in your spirit. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Come on and get it in your spirit. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. That's lifestyle. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's absolute truth. That's not your version of it. Apostate, unbeliever, backslider. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship. This is compromise, apostate church. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What does that mean, Bishop? I'm glad you asked. But rather preach against them. Like you hear me preaching now. Oh, but your pastor has it. No, they don't. And neither do you, apostate Christian church member. I said it. And I know it's highly, egregiously, and magnanimously inflammatory, and I'm still leaving it out there in your face. Deal with it. Because you're in error, and your pastor's in error. But rather reprove them. Your shepherds aren't reproving them, they're compromising with it. They're sympathizing with these lifestyles. Compromising with these lifestyles. Casting anointing off for filthy gain and covetousness and as apostle peter said for filthy lucre's sake or filthy money's sake and as the lord jesus said making money your god rather than his father your god the, the god of abraham isaac and israel for it is a shame verse 12 ephesians 5 for those of you just joining or will be viewing this video at any point for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret because they don't want to do this evil publicly. That's why you always have scandals. Because they're trying to hide their wickedness and their shame. And this is what the Lord told this same prophet Ezekiel. He says, listen, look at him. Look at, he takes him, he says, look at the wickedness behind the pulpit. Look at the wickedness where the my, my leaders are supposed to be. Look at the wickedness among them. They say that they're mine. But he told the prophet Ezekiel, I'm going to show you their wickedness behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. What they do in secret, but they appear in publicly, they appear publicly in public to be clean. And not only was it this way in Ezekiel's generation of Israelites, so was it in the Lord Jesus in his first coming amongst his generation of Israelites. The preachers had all kind of wickedness going on behind closed doors, behind the pulpit, and then they would step to the pulpit, these hypocrites, like they were clean. But the Lord Jesus said in Matthew the 23rd chapter, you watch the outside of the cup, but inside the cup it's full of iniquity and idolatry. Come on and get it in your spirit. And the final plague that's plaguing this apostate church, that's prevailing in this apostate church, is the plague of disobedience. So we got compromise, which casts off the anointing. We got covetousness that leads to compromise, that casts off the anointing as an old garment. We got sentiment. Which leads to sympathy, but does not lead to surrender. And now the third one that we see the Lord speaking to Ezekiel about is disobedience. And disobedience forsakes the covenant relationship between the disobedient and the Lord, who should be of the Lord of their salvation. Disobedience forsakes covenant. It did in Israel, and it's doing it in the United States of America. Our disobedience from this White House all the way to our house is leading us to forsake the covenant of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. And we're letting all of these foreign gods and foreign religions and foreign powers are invading our borders. And you're saying we need to keep these people out. Let me tell you something. The way you're going to keep their false, you don't need to keep them out. You need to keep their false gods out. And the way you're going to do that is by lifting up and making sure that from sea to signing sea, west coast to east coast, north to south, west coast to east coast, north and south, left and right, diagonally, swirling around, circular path, I don't care what you call it. Every inch of the bean and spiritual fiber and tapestry of the United States of America has to be completely saturated with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, if we are going to receive his blessings of protection and power 
and stop being invaded by all these false religions and false gods. And it is our disobedience that has forsaken the covenant with the Most High God, El Elyon. Turn with me to Matthew, the third chapter, and I'm closing. Matthew, the third chapter. We're going to quickly look at Matthew. I'm sorry, not Matthew, Malachi. Malachi, the third chapter, Old Testament, last book in the Old Testament. We're going to look at Malachi quickly, and we're going to look at Zechariah. The Holy Ghost has given me rest, and when he stops speaking, I stop speaking. Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi, the third chapter, last book in the Old Testament. Just flip to the last book, right before Matthew. Last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, third chapter. We're going to read one verse there, the seventh verse. Then we're going to Zechariah. If you want to quickly put your place there, we're going to read the first six verses in Zechariah. Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi, the third chapter, and the seventh verse. Please listen forensically. Our disobedience is forsaking the covenant. Listen to what the Lord says through the prophet Malachi. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances. That's the Lord's word by his commandments. You have gone away from them. There's that language of removing yourself. That is backsliding. That is the essential definition of apostasy. Sliding back from the word of the Lord. He said you are gone away from my ordinances. You are gone away from my ordinance established as laws, commandments, statutes, which are the, uh, which is the um, precepts of my mind. You want to know what I think about anything? Look in my word. But you all have gone away from the my, my mind. And in the New Testament, we it's called the mind of Christ. You don't want the truth of what our Father... We as Americans don't want the truth of what our Father is saying in heaven. Our disobedience has forsaken the covenant as a nation between us and him. We don't want to hear what he has to say. We don't care what he thinks about anything or what he has to say about anything. That's why we're defending apostate church all of these abominable things. You all are defending it. The body of Christ is not. So let me not say we in that sense. You all are. We're not. We're not defending it, we're reproving it, and preaching against it. But you all are sympathizing with it in your sentiment. And you won't surrender. And it has led you to the third plague that is prevailing in your church, which is disobedience that forsakes your covenant with your God. And when you forsake your covenant, you forsake your protection and you, your power. Notice, none of the churches who are in the firepower of the Holy Ghost have been shot up. It's all you churches that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, certain. You, oh, surely. You say, oh, well, we teach the Holy Ghost. We, you don't live in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You have a form of godliness, and you deny the power thereof. You don't believe in miracles. You don't believe in spiritual healing. You don't believe in the laying on the hands of the elders. You don't believe in speaking in tongues. Then you are not the body of Christ. You are this apostate church, according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Get it down in your spirit and do it today, quickly. Why you still have breath in your body before you take your last one and end up in the lake of fire. Get it down in your spirit. Even from the days of your father, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me. This is the Lord speaking to his prophet like he's speaking to me now. And I will return unto you. What does, der what does derivative and syllogistic reasoning tell us here? What does deductive reasoning if the Lord says, return unto me and I'll return unto you, if you don't return unto him, he will not return unto you. Why? Because you have not chosen for him to return unto you. It's not his fault, it's yours, unbeliever, apostate, backslider. I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? You sick apostate church that don't think you need a physician. You don't think you need to return because you think you're in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Wrong, 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 wrong. I call it the Samson principle. You don't know that the Spirit of the Lord is not with you. The blessing of the Lord is not with you. You can get money on your own. Satan can bless you to be wealthy. Bishop, I don't believe that. He told the Lord Jesus, he said... Listen, if you bow and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Satan can give you wealth. Apostate church, stop blaming it on my father in heaven. He's not blessing you, Satan is. I said it. 
Some of you, your preacher's blessing you because he's sold out to the devil. Satan is blessing him, so he shares a little bit with you, and he's got you thinking it's the Lord doing it. It ain't the Lord blessing you. It's your pastor, your satanic pastor. I said it, and I know you don't like it, and I don't care. Zechariah, the first chapter. In the eighth month, first verse, in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Barakai, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Mm-hmm. All of you in America, he's been sore displeased with your forefathers. Therefore say unto them, Prophet, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you. What syllogistic reasoning say again? If you don't turn unto me, I won't turn unto you in protection and in power and in sealing in my Holy Ghost. My covenant. You don't turn to the covenant, I won't turn to it. I'll be waiting on you to turn to it, and then I'll begin to bless you. And I'm not going to bless you, America, until you return to me. You want revival, you got to repent and to return. There's your word on this Sunday, Apostate Church, United States of America, it's corporate, political, and all of its leaders in your various fields. Return unto the Lord and he'll return unto you. You want your schools to stop being shot up? You want your neighborhoods to stop being shot up? You want your capitals to stop being rioted and overtaken? You want all of the strangers with their idolatrous gods to stop coming in the land? Return unto the God of Abraham, Abraham. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, and it's not going to stop until you do return. Your choice, and your choice only. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, verse 3, Zechariah, the first chapter, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, believers, cry loud and spare not, believers, cry loud and spare not, believers, don't be intimidated, be bold. Ask the Holy Ghost for boldness as the apostles did in the book of Acts. Saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. That's how I know the church is apostate. The majority of it. You don't preach like that, you false shepherds. You're not telling people to turn from their evil ways because you're too busy worried about their money. Turn from... Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? Question mark. And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words, this is the Lord speaking by the firepower of the Holy Ghost through the prophet Zechariah and also through this six foot two high yellow prophet from Detroit, Michigan here in Dallas, Texas. But my words and my statues which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so he hath dealt with us. In other words, we are receiving the wrath of the Lord because of our own evil and the evil of our doings and the evil of our ways. And United States of America, apostate church, backslider, apostate, unbeliever, so-called Christian, so are you receiving the wrath of the Lord because of your evil ways and your evil doings. Repent, stop it right now, and come into the Lord Jesus and in the firepower of his precious Holy Ghost. Listen, Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, all our friends and families watching all across the world, all of you that will view this video, listen, I love you because I preach the unadulterated word of the Lord to you, non-watered down, non-filtered, straight with no chaser. I love you in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I don't. I might not know you. I might not. But I divinely love you because I, I because I pray for you. And when I come on, I have a word directly from the heart of our Father as He preaches by the Holy Ghost through my mouth. And I just want to thank the Lord for all of you that are listening or will be listening. Please repent while you have a chance. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you in this war room on this morning. Thank you for speaking to us, all of us, in the United States of America and the nations of the world. Thank you for, and we worship you and praise you for what only you can do, Father. King Jesus, we love you for dying on the cross for us. Every sinner, every backslider, there is no dirtiness that we have gotten ourselves in as humanity that you cannot cleanse us and watch us if we desire to be cleansed and washed. I pray every backslider 
backslider, apostate, and unbeliever, Lord, who will hear this word will be touched by the fire power of your Holy Ghost. Every apostate will come into the kingdom of the Lord. Every backslider will return from the ways that they have gone away and strayed in. All the prodigals will return and every unbeliever will come out of this darkness and into the marvelous light wherein we stand as your body strong, championing, reproving all works of darkness, preaching your gospel until the ends of the earth, until Lord Jesus you shall call us home or we shall return unto, or you shall return unto this earth that all who have crucified you will look upon you and mourn. Holy Ghost have your way in your saints the rest of this day. I'm talking about your true saints. Those of us who are dwelt by your spirit, have your way in us. And Father, if there's anybody that needs you on the remainder of this day that may have not heard the message, put them in our path or us in their paths, and we'll be careful to give them your word. Father, we thank you. And we sanctify you in our hearts. We're ready to give to every man an answer of the reason of the hope that is in us with meekness and fear before your presence. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we honor you for always speaking to Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, as we preach your word to the nations of the world. Have your way in us on the remainder of the day. And Father, we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For we love you because your word says that you first loved us. We bless you and we honor you, Father. In King Jesus' name we always pray. Amen and amen. I bid you all a good day for now.